My name's Dennis Sands. I'm a film music scoring mixer in the Los Angeles area. I started out recording records and then eventually uh, evolved into doing television shows. Back then it was all done live. There was no remix. You just sort of did the mix and that went into the television show. And that required me to develop the skills to record all kinds of different music live. Eventually I got the opportunity to do some movies and that you know led into my film career. I was also quite fortunate. I met a composer named Alan Silvestri. I met him doing, doing a television show called Chips and he got the opportunity to score a movie called Romance in the Stone. We had got on very, very well so he hired me to do the score. The movie was a huge hit. A lot of careers were sort of launched from that movie, mine being one of them. I mentioned Alan Silvestri worked with Danny Elfman. About to do another project with Alexander Desplat. I work with Mark Isham, Aaron Zygman, and I've done a few projects with John Williams. So I, I've had a pretty long and fortunate career. I've worked with some really, really talented people and still do, and I'm very grateful. One experience that was especially unique for me in terms of music in general was Forrest Gump. With Forrest Gump, I recorded the score. I also dubbed the movie. In addition to the score in the movie, there, was, there were 59 songs. Music was really essential to the creative content of the movie, to tell the story. And the songs were chosen by the director, Bob Zemeckis, not for the, for the music per se, but the songs were specific to the time frame. He selected really well-known popular songs at the time so that the audience would know exactly what the time frame of the movie was. And it, they were brilliant choices, and they did that extremely well. And then additionally, you had this incredible film score that went along with it. You know, I had my hands on all the music. And that was, a, for me, an, an especially meaningful project. We also first uh, Academy Award nomination, so it even had a little bit of that going for it too, so. One of the scores I absolutely love that Danny Elfman did is, was a small movie called uh, Big Fish. It was a great score, and I loved it. It was a great experience. I've been fortunate. I've worked on, on a lot of really good movies. Um, Shawshank Redemption was a was a really great movie to work on. We recorded that one in show order, record and mixed it, so I actually watched the movie as I as we went along. It's a great movie, great story, and a wonderful score, and that was a great one as well. So I've, I've been real fortunate. I've had some, some, and still am having a pretty good time in my career worked on good projects with, with, you know, great people and hopefully keep going. Typically, I work directly with the composer. My job really, in relation to the, to the film score, for example, is to execute technically and artistically the composer's vision, musical vision. That's my job. The only way to do that is to understand what the composer wants in relation to the movie. At the end of the day, the music has to help the director tell the story. In the recording process for, for orchestra that I use, start with the main primary microphones are room microphones, and it's about Oh, probably about 
10 microphones that I consider my room microphones, if you will. There's, there's three over the, the decatry, which is a microphone mounting device that basically hangs over the podium. And I have three Neumann M50s that I use. Those are tube condenser microphones, They're, which are very unique. They're omnidirectional up to about 2K, and then they get directional above that. So you do, it does give you a stereo, nice stereo spread. Uh, and then I use two wide microphones, along, basically along the same plane across the uh, front of the orchestra. And those are uh, uh, Bronner uh, KHE microphones that um, I usually set an omnidirectional. Usually I have a pair of surround microphones, stereo surround microphones, uh, which are condenser, solid state condensers. They might be uh, Sennheisers or Neumanns. And then I'll have three in the back of the orchestra, above the percussion. I usually have three overhead mics there. The left and right are usually solid state condensers and uh, over the timpani is a uh, Norman U47 tube microphone. And those are the primary microphones. All the other microphones are more or less spot mics that I use or don't use depending on what's going on. I have used uh, solid state condenser Sheps microphones over woodwinds and then ribbon microphones over uh, which are AEA mics which are on both the French horns and the, the uh, brass section. Preamps make a big difference. One of the things I was always taken by millennia preamps is the clarity and the lack of color. Preamps typically color the sound. So if you listen to one, you have the same microphone, and you plug it into one, one preamp, you plug it into a different one, you, they sound different. The thing I always loved about the Millennia, especially for orchestral application, is that it's an incredibly clean sound with very, very little coloration at all. It sounds like the orchestra sounds. You go out in the room, come into the control room, and it pretty much sounds the same. I like that. I appreciate that. Other preamps tend to color the sound a, a great, some a little bit, some a great deal more. And for a Kessel recording, um, that's a detriment. For some other things, if you're doing pop music or whatever, you may want that coloration. And so um, I'll select a, a, a preamp depending on that. For like a drum sound, I might want a, a particular kind of preamp, a Neve 1081, for example, that has a, a, a very specific kind of sound. But for orchestral work, I want something that's as clean and pure as possible. And that's what Millennia excels at. Also great for solo instruments, acoustic guitars, pianos, things like that. And then if I want to color it later, I'll do that. Preamps are essential for the capture of the sound, and they're equally as important as microphone choice, let's say. Uh, it's really critical in the selection of the preamp. So I pay a lot of attention, I think about that a lot, in terms of when I'm recording something, what, what preamps I'm gonna use, or is, as I say, equally as important as a microphone. John LeGru is, a, is an old friend of mine, and um, he's, a, he's a really brilliant guy, and he's, his product line is, is stellar. His preamp line, they're excellent, they're simple, they're easy to use, they sound great. His EQs are also excellent. I have two of his compressors. His, his products are very, very well designed beautifully manufactured, they're hardy, they're robust, they sound great, they're versatile, and as I said, I have, I think I, I don't know, I have 12, 14, 20 channels of preamps, I think eight channels of his EQs, 
I have. So I have a lot of his products. So I'm, I'm speaking out of experience. He's a guy I respect a lot. He's an excellent company. They've always, they stand behind their products. I strongly urge uh, anyone to, to check them out.